of the longest-running and farthest-reaching missions in NASA history, began their journey to Jupiter and Saturn in 1977 and never came to an end. Scientists were taken aback when Voyager 1 spotted active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon Io, in addition to discovering new rings and moons surrounding the two giants. Thus, on August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 became the first man-made object to enter interstellar space, racing into the unknown with a golden greeting for anything it meets. As its trajectory took it up and out of the solar system on board, this one of the most recognizable of the 20th century NASA spacecraft, though strange things are happening recently. Mission scientists discovered that the spacecraft didn't go into safe mode or emit any other alarms, but instead seemed puzzled about where it was in space. And now it's sending NASA an odd message, and scientists are trying to figure out what it means. What's going on with the certified space soarer? Do aliens play a role in this at all? Was it a bad idea for the Voyager spacecraft to transmit and carry Earth's coordinates? Join us as we explore how Voyager 1 just sent a disturbing message from an unknown star. The computer signal that maintains Voyager 1's antenna directed toward Earth is returning incorrect numerical sequences, like rows of zeros. Members of the mission team, such as project manager Suzanne Dodd, who started her career on the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft 40 years ago as her first job after graduating from college in 1984, are attempting to ascertain what is going on with this distant probe. Right now, Voyager 1 is traveling through interstellar space. In 2012, it crossed the heliopause, the boundary of the solar wind's dominion in space. The spacecraft hasn't departed the solar system, though it is still subject to the sun's gravitational pull. As Voyager 1 creeps along the edge of our cosmic home, astronomers hope the spacecraft will get off its lawn and proceed even deeper into distant space. However, the further it travels, the older it becomes. It has been hurtling through space at a rate of about 3.6 times the distance between Earth and the Sun per year, putting it at a staggering 166.68 billion miles away from our planet at present. On September 5, 1977, two weeks after its robotic counterpart, Voyager 2, Voyager 1 was launched. They both set out in the same direction bound for the outer planets but their paths diverged as they swung past Saturn in 1980 and 1981. There's a problem with the circuitry, which when you think about it, is really impressive for a circuit that's 45 years old. Dodd claims that the probe can indicate when something is awry. We don't know what will happen as Voyager 1 explores the border of our cosmic lake, where the sun's magnetic field interacts with the interstellar medium. There is a wealth of untapped astronomy information in this region. Therefore, Voyager 1's outdated machinery must be self-sufficient. It is quite capable of figuring out what's wrong on its own and placing itself in a secure place. However, the fact that it hasn't entered any sort of fault prevention mode indicates that the spacecraft believes everything is quite all right. It simply began speaking a foreign language that we are unable to grasp. For whatever reason, the Voyager 1's Attitude Articulation and Control System ACS, computer appears to be the source of the issue. This computer, one of three on board, manages Voyager 1's orientation by directing its thrusters and maintaining the high-gain antenna pointed in Earth's direction to allow data about the interstellar medium to continue leaking back. Together with the intensity of the signal and the absence of fault protection activation, the team's ability to guide the spacecraft indicates that Voyager 1 is operating well. However, the telemetry signal itself is illogical. It generates either 377 or all zeros, according to Dot. We would be seeing a degradation in our signal from our spacecraft, which they aren't experiencing if the spacecraft was in serious trouble. Something is, we believe, causing the telemetry data to be jumbled or unintelligible somewhere in the interface with the flight data system, and as of yet, that's something scientists still don't quite get. There's a good likelihood that the cause of this oddity will remain a mystery then all that's left to do is learn to live with the new perplexing but safe reality. One thing is certain, though, Voyager 1's operations are still ongoing, and it is still returning science data every day. Voyager 1 is now rocking out to some sweet space tunes, further away than ever. We now have a sense of what interstellar space looks like because of powerful observatories like Hubble and TESS, but have you ever wondered what it sounds like? Now Voyager 1 is hearing the music of the universe beyond our solar system. Although the probe is outdated by today's standards, it is gathering chill vibes from the interstellar medium. 
Now that it has long since departed the heliosphere and is bravely venturing where no spacecraft has gone before since 1977, it turns out that even seemingly vacant regions of space are active. When nothing is exploding or flaring, the probe is listening for the faint humming sound that represents the melody of the stars. As it flies through space, the interstellar medium hums endlessly, as long as there is no cataclysmic event occurring. Even if the stars themselves aren't producing any kind of symphony a scientist would understand, the subtle buzzing sound far better than a random downloader. There has never been a more thorough analysis of the sound of the interstellar medium and what it might reveal about the enormous void beyond the heliosphere. Variations in the density of interstellar gas as it passes by Earth are being gradually revealed to a research team through communications sent back to Earth by Voyager's equipment. The Cornell University researcher Stella Koch and her team have been tracking the evidence as it ventures more and farther into the unknown. The voltage differential across the spacecraft antenna is measured by the Voyager 1 Plasma Wave System PWS. The electric field in the plasma can be utilized to measure frequency and time variations in its electric field. We notice fluctuations in the electric field, which allows us to detect the plasma waves. We call these plasma waves the sounds of interstellar space because they occur at radio frequencies. It was no longer necessary to wait for the sun to erupt in a solar flare or coronal mass ejection in order to learn about plasma density. Except during solar events that disrupt the surrounding plasma, the steady humming may resemble cosmic elevator music rather than screeching metal, but it can nevertheless provide information about the distribution of plasma throughout space. Additionally, it can provide insight into the delicate activity occurring in interstellar gas. The majority of this gas is made up of hydrogen and helium, the same elements that make up stars, and some of it is left over from when they first formed. Large-scale vibrations in the plasma that are brought on by solar activity, such as coronal mass ejections, are known as plasma oscillation events, and their duration is limited. The weaker plasma waves we have observed, according to Koch, pass between previously detected plasma oscillation episodes and continue for a far longer duration, roughly three years in the data they reviewed for this study. Stars eventually collapse into black holes, explode as supernova, or shrink into white dwarfs. If something like a supernova occurred far enough away to spare the spacecraft, Voyager 1 would detect disruptions in the plasma. The interstellar medium is dotted with supernova remnants, and the dust and gas left over from star birth and demise are frequently recycled in the creation of new stars. Though it is certainly unlikely, it will be intriguing to observe if Voyager 1 picks up any signals as it continues to travel across the skies that would indicate a star is about to explode or is drawing its final breath. What is causing the waves to continue is yet unknown. They might only be thermal in nature when low-level waves are excited by the hot gas although those are presumably relatively infrequent. It is possible that there are also external excitations from activity or occurrences on other neighboring stars. This incredibly persistent spacecraft may also provide information on the interactions between interstellar gas and the heliosphere, which may have an impact on the heliosphere's shape. NASA scientists discovered that the bubble that houses our solar system is more likely to resemble a squished croissant than the previously believed oblong form. These specific oscillations, in contrast to much stronger events that have been previously seen, show that the waves are continually energized. B. Because of their persistence, it is believed that the heliosphere was bent into this shape by solar particles inside of it. Voyager 1 could beam back proof for the influence of forces no one had suspected in the far reaches of the final frontier. Now that it is listening to the interstellar plasma wave emission on the outside, if she had the superpowers to modernize Voyager 1 from this distance, so it might show even more, she opined that a longer antenna would probably be able to better detect these weak plasma waves, and that even the most basic upgrades, such as modern data storage capabilities, would be useful. Having a powerful array of telescopes on Earth to communicate with Voyager 1 or any future interstellar probe from such a great distance is another important technological consideration. Cordis remains hopeful about the information that the persistent spacecraft may be able to provide about what could otherwise seem to be a pitch-black void. Voyager's in-situ observations are unique, and since its power sources will run out sometime this decade, it would be beneficial to have a follow-up mission. However, the spacecraft will keep circling the planet for billions of miles, 
sending a message to any sentient spacefaring culture that may come across them. Is the planet ready to face an alien invasion? Some forward-thinking authors predicted an alien invasion of Earth long before the Apollo moon landings and private space companies launched satellites into orbit. The idea of alien invasion is discussed more seriously these days. A contentious book that purported to be an authentic report from a federal study group in the early 1960s examined alternatives to war, which was defined as the primary organizing force in any society. The analysis concluded that indeed, the crux of the issue in creating a political alternative to warfare is credibility. This is where the space race concepts falter. Despite being so perfectly fitted as economic alternatives to conflict in many respects, even the most extravagant and fantastical space endeavor is unable to create a credible external threat on its own. There has been much debate about whether or not such a threat, by unifying humanity against the threat of destruction by creatures from other worlds or outer space, would give the last best hope of peace, etc. Tests of the plausibility of an extraterrestrial invasion threat have been suggested. It's plausible that some of the more puzzling flying saucer occurrences in the news recently were actually the first of this type of experiment. On September 21, 1987, President Ronald Reagan echoed this view when he told the United Nations General Assembly, in our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Should we be alarmed when numerous authors, including the President of the United States, talk of an alien invasion? Following a wave of UFO sightings in the United States and other countries in 1952, including many craft flying above Washington, D.C., the U.S. Air Force ordered any UFO it contacted to shoot down if it was told to land but refused to do so. The search for flying saucers by fighter pilots ended tragically. There were numerous collisions, one over the Atlantic Ocean that may have claimed the lives of 10 fighters. 1952 saw the loss of 94 fighter jets worldwide in June and July, with 51 crew members reported dead. In several instances, two or three planes were crashing into the earth at once. The New York Times reports that in 1951 and 1956, 192 planes disappeared or crashed. When the shoot-down orders were revoked, the crashes stopped. Pilots were instructed to simply report any UFO incident to their particular airline or commanders. But in the end, these reports were only sent directly to Washington. Some people have theorized that this was a brief conflict with UFOs. Some more recent real-world events seem to point to an extraterrestrial component. It appears that every time a space launch is scheduled to carry some benign payload-like components for a communication satellite or the space station, for example, everything goes off without a hitch. However, these frequently blow up or disappear during covert launches, which are typically only identified as military in origin. This has led some conspiracy theorists to believe that the nations of Earth are being stopped from discovering extraterrestrial life or deploying weapons in space. The Russian Phobos-2 probe was intended to conduct a close scan of Mars and even set down sensors on the planet's odd moonlet Phobos, which bears the probe's name. However, communication with Phobos was lost in January 1989 when the ship aligned with it. The chairman of the Russian space agency overseeing Phobos-2, Alexander Duniev, declared that shortly before losing communication with Earth, the fatal probe had sent back its final images showing a small, peculiar-shaped object between itself and Mars. There were rumors that this item was the reason behind the craft's disappearance. When communication between the U.S. Mars Observer and Earth was abruptly lost in 1993, this loss happened again just as it entered Mars' atmosphere. It too vanished. Remote viewers, psychics with military training who claimed to have seen ghosts, also stated that a small object approached the Mars Observer and lifted off the surface. As if this wasn't bizarre enough, a Titan IV rocket detonated at a height of 100,000 feet later in 1993. According to Air Force Colonel Frank Sterling, the Titan IV program manager, an unidentified object appeared to strike the Titan IV shortly before it exploded. In an Air Force film of the launch, despite the official explanation attributing the loss to a repaired rocket engine component. More recently, in September 2016, a commercial corporation called SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket that was undergoing testing at Cape Canaveral 
Florida, burst, delaying private space exploration efforts. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, called the rocket explosion the most difficult and complex failure we have ever had in 14 years and claimed that his company was not ruling out the possibility that the Falcon 9 was struck by an unidentified flying object. Some scholars believe that these and other space disasters have led to the possibility that extraterrestrial beings have already visited Earth and are generating these catastrophes to try and isolate the planet because of our nuclear weapons and warlike behavior. Was it a mistake for the Voyager spacecraft to broadcast Earth coordinates? The answer is yes, as stated in L. Ron Hubbard's science fiction novel Battlefield Earth. The Cyclo invaders in the novel consider Earth to be a rim star system located far from the center of the galaxy in the 16th universe, which was the final universe discovered by their species and was never fully mapped. If not for the Voyager probes, Earth may have been overlooked. Instead, the Cyclos, upon learning of the gold disk's existence, invaded, gassed the planet, and slaughtered the vast majority of its inhabitants in order to plunder its mineral wealth. It was all in the name of intergalactic mining profits and banking for the Cyclos, who believed they possessed the rights to all of space and could use the power of gold to take over entire solar systems. A gold-plated audiovisual disc depicting a diagram of Earth's location in our solar system serves as a virtual roadmap to our home planet and is included on Voyager 1. In the event that intelligent life forms are found along the way, there is a variety of scientific data, spoken greetings from Earthlings, and a medley of Earth sounds, including whale calls, a baby crying, and waves breaking on a shore. On this disc, there is also a collection of music, including works by classical composers like Mozart, Bach, and Beethoven, as well as native music from various Earth regions. Stephen Hawking and other scientists have voiced concerns that Voyager could bring the wrong kind of attention to Earth. Hawking has said in interviews that he is confident in the existence of intelligent life forms, but that talking with them could be risky. Forewarned by Hawking, we only have to look at ourselves to see how intelligent life might develop into something we wouldn't want to meet. The hypothetical aliens might exist in massive ships having used up all the resources from their home planet. A visit by aliens, he speculated, could be like Christopher Columbus's arrival in the Americas, which didn't turn out very well for the Native Americans. How would a sophisticated alien culture react if they saw Earth the same way we do and thought nothing of entering into a region and extracting minerals at the expense of plant and animal life? So was it a mistake to send out a map of Earth's coordinates? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.